Hello, sportsmen. It's the 27th of January, the year 2000. It has gotten very, very chilly out. I thought I might as well show you a trip I took at the beginning of this month, which kind of echoes the weather we've had at the ending of this month. We've had a lot of fronts moving through. We're going to learn about that in the guide report, how that affects the fishing. But I have outdoor news and a lot more, so you stay tuned on Fed Trost. You're watching The Practical Sportsman. Did you miss it? I missed it. I missed it. Oh. Yeah, we got high winds. You'll have to be escorted across. Pull right in behind that semi, and they'll come over and get you with an escort. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We left Lansing with no snow and arrived at the Mackinac Bridge in a blizzard. It was windy on land, but nothing compared to the wind from the Straits of Mackinac that howled over the bridge. There you go. Thank you. Have a good night. We'll try. It was 11.30 p.m. and time for bed. We pulled over in the motorhome, kicked on the furnace, and slept comfortably as it snowed. We were on the road again at 7 a.m. Never did see the sun come up. The storm continued as I made my first trip of the new millennium to Gladstone, staying in a motorhome even though it is winter. I had people to see and things to do, like ice fishing on Little Bay to Knock. So what's the strategy? The strategy is to let them take it until it starts spinning again. That way you know for sure he's got a hold over. Troy Bernson was talking about the spinning shaft of the polar tip-up. The spool of fishing line is under the water where it won't freeze up. And you know a fish is running with the bait when the shaft is spinning. Now, not wanting to spook the fish, Troy gives a few extra turns of the shaft to slacken the line so the walleye won't feel any resistance. Then. His years of experience let him know the precise moment to set the hook. His years of experience also let him know that we aren't always as smart as we think. Oh, no, I Did you it. miss it? I missed it. I missed it. Oh, man. The punishment for missing a fish and losing the bait is using your already ice-cold hands to dip into the ice-cold bait bucket and pull out an ice-cold minnow to rehook the tip-up. The tip-up, of course, is a fishing mechanism you don't hold in your hand like a rod. It's a freestanding spool of line that trips a spring when the spool moves, lets you know a fish is probably running with your bait. That way, you can sit in a nice, warm ice shanty and watch for the flags to pop up. Sometimes the action is fast and furious, and other times, like today, on the heels of a blizzard, the fish are only feeding now and then. The shanty that Troy shares with a few other friends is a deluxe job, one built to withstand the sub-zero temperatures of Little Bay to Knock. Now, my buddy, Tim Farragon from Langsburg, was already inside where it was warm, and feeling the cold air when the door opened and seeing us covered with snow brought a smile to his face. Troy and I repeated the trip to the tip-up several times, but each time, the walleye made off with a minnow. Still fun, though, because fishing in a shanty is like having a fort when we were kids. It's a warm, comfortable place to be with friends. Of course, the key to the comfort is the LP gas bottle and the heater. It warms you when you're cold and prepares you for some of the cold tasks that lie ahead. The ice was over a foot thick in this bay. Plenty of support for a truck. The problem was not the ice, it was the snow and the slush on top of the ice. You might remember the time I got a pickup camper stuck in the snow. Well, that truck only had power to one front wheel and one rear wheel when it was in four-wheel drive. Troy Bernson's truck has the positraction type drive that can shift power to whatever wheel needs it. Now, that's an option that is well worth it if you're planning to use a truck in deep snow. Getting stuck out into a place like this would be no fun at all. But if it's not your truck and somebody else is paying for the wear and tear, it is fun to try to drive through tough country like this. The ruts and slushy snow can give you a thrill ride like a mud bog in the summer. It can be a real hoot. 
<laughs> little beady knock. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> So far, this trip to Gladstone has been a rough introduction to the winter of 2000. Not every day in the UP is a blizzard, though. The winter can be peaceful and beautiful, especially at sunrise. The backlighting shows the steam rising from pressure cracks on Little Bay to Knock. Now, these are small cracks, no safety hazard. The water that squeezes through the cracks turns to steam in the morning sun like the steam from a shanty with a fisherman who got there before dawn. Now, I mentioned that fishing from a shanty is like having a fort, you know, the kind we had when we were kids. That's part of the allure of ice fishing. That's also a part of the fun of making an elaborate deer blind, getting away to our fort. And frankly, that's the same kind of fun I get from traveling in a motorhome. It's a fort on wheels that may not have running water in the winter, but for sleeping and cooking and watching TV and lounging and sightseeing, an RV in the winter is great. On our return trip from Gladstone, the morning sun gave us a far different perspective of the landscape and waterscape than we saw four days earlier when we trudged along US 2 during the blizzard. Sitting at home, watching the yellowish-orange rays of the sun coming up over Lake Michigan on this videotape gives you kind of a warm feeling. But to be there, holding the camera, trying not to shake when the wind chill on my fingers seemed like a hundred below, I tell you, it was anything but warm. It was warm in the camper, though, and I was glad to be able to see the beauty of the winter on a day that was more user-friendly than when we drove up. Instead of being escorted across the Mackinac Bridge during a winter gale, on our way back, we can enjoy it the way tourists do, looking at postcards. I know this isn't fishing and hunting footage right here, it's more like a travel log, but I couldn't help it. I go over this bridge on the average you know, once a month maybe, and it's always different. There are usually freighters or big boats coming or going through the straits, which are always interesting to, to watch for some reason. But in the winter, when they bash their way through the ice flows, it's even more fascinating. Now this ice isn't frozen solid yet, it's more like a sea of huge ice cubes that the boats push their way through. How cool it would be to see an icebreaker chopping its way through the straits. Eh, maybe I'll get to see that on another trip later this winter. Now, even though it looked like a much different day on this Friday than when we came through in the blizzard the previous Monday night, Michigan weather is not to be trusted, not even as far as you can see. But because the sun was right, we stopped on the Mackinac City side of the bridge and went to that traditional scenic viewing area where everybody takes pictures of the bridge during the summer. We got our postcard shots, then started south on I-75 where we found a surprise. Here we go again. 40 miles south of the sunshine as we crossed into Otsego County, it looked like the Yukon. Talk about your Michigan weather. <laughs> it's something, isn't it? 